I'm always elated any time I hear that I'm coming to Oxford because Oxford is a center for excellence and I know good things happen in Oxford. And any time I'm in Oxford, I feel like I'm at home. I've got lots of friends, uh, social friends and uh, work-related friends. So uh, today I would like to share with you what I've been doing for the last two weeks here. I worked closely with uh, Eliam and uh, there are other team members who I've also worked closely with and I will be able to appreciate them at the end of this, uh, at the end of this uh, presentation. So I would like to share with you the laboratory skills training for clinical research in resource constrained uh, settings. And just a brief of introduction, um, I have been uh, working in the laboratory for the last 27 years. And um, the first uh, eight years I, w I worked in the Ministry of Health in Kenya. And then I joined Welcome Trust. I also worked eight years there. Then I joined the U.S. Army um, a research organization in, in Kisumu, well, uh, Walter Reed. Then I worked there for three years. And then uh, Welcome Trust called me back again in Kilifi to tell me, why don't you come back? So I've been, uh, I went back as a, a laboratory manager, and I've been there for the last eight years. So everywhere I go, I work eight, eight, eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, this time I think I'll be able to stay there for, for a long time. Um, some of the... Uh, reasons or the goals and objectives why I came here. Uh, one was to identify the knowledge, the knowledge, skills, and the training gaps uh, in laboratory aspect uh, of uh, clinical research. We wanted to know where are the gaps uh, in um, laboratory uh, knowledge and skills. We, after knowing the gaps, we wanted to develop the electronic e-learning modules for the um, uh, global health network. And thirdly, we want to develop the system of uh, review and authorization uh, procedures for upload, which I think that will be a continuous process. Uh, we also wanted to explore other areas that are relevant to laboratory uh, services back in Africa and any other uh, resource constraint settings in the world. Um, and the other thing that um, brought me is to familiarize myself with the Global Health Network, which I now appreciate a lot of, I've learned so much here in terms of Global Health Network, um, through interaction with the, with the team here, and also through the, uh, the website, and also just looking at where the, the platform is in Oxford. Um, and lastly, we want to look at the next step, and that is um, to dedicate a space for laboratories on the Global Health Network. Uh, to support knowledge exchange and skill sharing between laboratories and research staff in resource constrained settings. So allow me to share with you what we have, um, what I, I have done. And um, every time you talk about resource constrained settings, uh, the picture in my mind, the picture comes in Africa. Probably there are some other countries in Asia. Probably there are some other countries in South America. But mainly it is Africa where the resource is the, the main constraint. And in Africa, we've got a lot of tropical diseases, um, ranging from viral, bacterial, uh, parasitic, fungal. Yeah, these are diseases which are rampant in Africa. And uh, we have, lately, we have um, uh, pharmaceutical companies, we have got researchers, the universities coming to Africa because that's where the diseases are. And they want to develop the, the product. And that include the vaccine, that include the drugs, and this product, you cannot develop them unless you try them in the field. And so we have so many companies, so many sponsoring uh, universities coming to Africa. But the drug companies or whoever is going coming to do research in Africa needs laboratories to support evidence-based medicine. Without laboratory, there's no evidence-based medicine. And thus, we need uh, quality laboratories, which are actually lacking in Africa. We've got few quality laboratory services available in Africa. I am lucky that I am working with KB Welcome Trust, where the resources are abundant. It's just the same as in Oxford here. And there are other areas in my country, and indeed in Africa, where the resources are very, very lacking, the shortage of resources. And those are the areas that we want to help. We want to bring them up in terms of giving them knowledge, the skills, and the experience. We have little access to information back in Africa and the training opportunities are not readily available. And so um, Global Health Network will come in handy for those areas that do not have uh, access to information and training opportunities. 
Most of the laboratories in Africa are having um, infrastructures in terms of building and facilities and equipment which are inadequate for uh, doing clinical trial. In fact, any time a company is coming, their biggest worry is um, do we have facilities? And a good example is recently we did a study for Malaria Challenge and uh, one of your staff here was the principal investigator in Nairobi and it was a big challenge getting the laboratory up to speed. As, comparison, as compared to Kelifi, the one in Nairobi was, could not be able to do the uh, vaccine study or challenge study. And so with this in mind, we think that we need to set up a platform. We need to set up a platform for where the, the, we can get the information, we can get um, uh, required uh, learning tools, and some of the current challenges uh, in conducting training for clinical laboratories in Africa includes, if you go to other, other sites, there are no training at all at all. There are research institutions, but training is not available. No post, after training from the college or from the university, you come and start working, and there is no any other training available for them. And with time, they start degenerating. With time, things start scrambling down, and there's no systems for the laboratory. So that's one of the reasons why we need this platform that will be able to uh, help us in continuous education. Uh, the other challenge that we have in terms of training back in Africa is that in, in areas where there's training, there's periodic or sporadic training courses offered. You know, it's not like here that you have many courses available for you anytime you need it. There it's probably coming in one cycle in a year and then you need it for another year. But you see the knowledge uh, advanced every, every now and then. So if you wait for another one year, there could, have been, there could be gaps in between. So these are some of the gaps that when we have this, pl this platform, we'll be able to fill the gap. Um, we have participants, well, the way we do it back in Africa is that in most cases we have uh, a facilitator, just like me, sitting down with participants, and so we just exchange the, the information. But we don't have a place where we can do the references, and this is where the Global Health Network will come handy for us. We'll be able to get the references, we'll be able to get a place where we can go anytime, 24 24 seven, can be able to get the references. Instead of just relying on one person probably, who sometimes not willing to share the knowledge with the rest of the team. Um, and information is, uh, whenever we're having this kind of training, the information about through the discussion, and the facilitators, uh, as I've already said, do not have the references, and also the students too. So how is the electronic course, how will it enhance e-learning in resource constrained settings? Um, part of this um, global health network, uh, the steps, uh, part of it is to strengthen the laboratory capacity to support clinical trials in Africa. And also uh, it's going to enhance the training or the e-learning e courses through making it available throughout, anytime, all the time. Anytime that somebody wants to get any information, it's very easy for them to go to the website and get the information. It's also going to enhance uh, the training because, uh, through ne um, internet. Right now in Africa, there's a lot of the network capacity is really, really progressing very fast. And if you can go to any rural area and get the network um, internet. And so we feel that when we have this um, training e-learning uh, tools on the website, it's very easy to be accessible to any group uh, anywhere, in, even in the remotest part of Africa. And then I think the other thing that is really, really um, uh, we need to for our staff is to motivate our staff. And that we can only motivate our staff through strengthening or making them um, uh, current with the technologies and information available. And um, we have a lot of challenge because most of the time a lot of staff ask us, oh, I need the training, I need the training but we have very few people who, who can do the training for them. And they are, therefore, if we have, um, if we have the, this platform, it'd be a, a way of you know, motivating our staff to continue getting continuous um, professional development. And then we, the, the platform will be able to improve the networks of laboratories. We have got, Africa is huge, and we have West Africa, South Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, but we don't know what's happening in each part of Africa, in each side, the other side of Africa. So if you have a platform like this one, that's a platform where all of us will be able to meet and be, I'll be able to know what's happening in Ghana, I'll be able to know what's happening in South Africa, I'll be able to know what's happening anywhere in, in, in African laboratories. And indeed, this is 
the tool that will be able to join us together. Um, again, uh, it will be able to strengthen the partnership and collaborations. Like we have already started right now, I come here it's as part of partnership and collaboration, and you also come back to Kilifi, we go to other sites in Africa, and through that way, we are able to learn much that we can, that we did not learn in, in, in the class, in schools, so through investing one another, collaboration and partnership. Um, what will be the role of King Welcome Trust in Kilifi? in this partnership or in this collaboration for e-learning tools. Uh, back in Cliffy, as I've already said, we are, uh, we are endowed with resources in terms of, you know, facilities, in terms of uh, the equipment, in terms of the knowledge. And therefore, we feel that um, if we can use Cliffy Welcome Trust to co-host the clean call, the Global Health Network Center, I think it will enhance the the training, it will enhance, it will really make a lot of progress in terms of um, uh, e-learning. We have computers, we have a computer lab that is with about about 40 computers. And anytime anybody wants to learn, they can easily just go to that computer lab or a training computer room and get access to the information that they need. And even if you have got 40 members of staff participants, it's very easy to train them because of the facilities that are available for us in Africa, in Kilifi. And we can be used as a, a, a hub for East and Central Africa, if not the whole of Africa. Um, we can also provide real-time, our hands-on training, in areas where there is necessary. If somebody has been doing the training on, on, online, but really want the, the, the hands-on or real-time, we can easily bring them to Cliffy and have, have the, the training there. Uh, how about the role of Global Health Network team in Oxford? Uh, this is the center, as I've already said, this is the center of information and technology power. So we believe that everything good, any, all the, if you want any knowledge in the world, you come to Oxford, you'll get it. And so we b believe that um, we, through working, uh, having this uh, platform here as a platform administrator, we'll be able to get the necessary information, skills, and experience. Um, Oxford will also be able to develop the training course tools as they have already started doing right now. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of improvement in what's already been developed. And uh, uh, also Oxford is able to harness the resources necessary for this course. And I'm sure there are many other things that probably we are probably be able to add on to what we are already doing um, with the Oxford team. Setting up a dedicated space for laboratories on global um, global uh, health network, that is also another objective. And uh, what we have discussed, what I discussed with uh, Leanne, uh, we have already identified some of the courses that we can put onto the platform. And that includes uh, good laboratory practices, which we have already written some modules. We are doing well. Um, we have also identified that laboratory quality management system that we can put onto the platform. We have also identified health and safety. That's a big thing in Africa right now because most laboratories, if you are working there, the health and safety is not given a priority. And I think that's one area that through a global health network, we'll be able to give people more information. And then a point of care diagnostics. This is also another big area because if you're working in a rural setup with no electricity, and the only tool that you have would be point of care uh, testing. So we have got a lot of researchers coming in right now, and if they're working in a remote, a remote areas, what they do is that they ask for point of care testing. And so we're going to put that one also onto the platform. And I would like, um, we have also identified that competency assessment can be done through global uh, health network, and we are going to have question bank, whereby you're going to have variety of questions, different sorts of questions that we can always be uh, shifting every now and then, and each time we want to test our study participants, then we can have the questions for competence, testing the competency assessment. And uh, there are other questions that people always ask um, in the field. Where can, how can I know about certain questions? And so we're going to have an area in this network dealing with frequently asked questions. So anytime somebody wants to know, get information on questions that are frequently asked, they can easily go to the website and get the information. And we are going to have also have laboratory blog page. This is where we're going to exchange the information. It's going to be like um, 
if you want to discuss some issues, topical issues, you can easily go to the blog and exchange the information with anybody in Africa, anybody in the world, West, whether it's in South America, in Thailand, in Kenya, wherever, it's easily. So we're going to have a meeting. That's going to be our meeting room on this blog, in this uh, Global Health Network. So here are some of the list of modules that we, for the last two weeks that we have developed here. We have, so far we have got about, um, we have a total of um, 15, but we have worked on about 10, 10 that are completed, and the, re the remaining five, um, we can be able to do them um, between uh, me and Liam online. And these are areas that we have identified as major areas for laboratory management. That includes organization and personnel, that's a big area. Facilities, it's a big area too. Equipment, uh, most of the laboratories have got equipment, but service, in terms of service, nothing is happening because they don't have the information. A standard operating procedures, people are doing the work, but there is no standard procedure doing the work. And therefore, if you have the standard operating procedures, and if you have uh, templates for them, it's very easy for, uh, for the sites to make uh, the slides to decide to make uh, the SOPs. And laboratory reagents and kits and materials, that's another major area that we have identified and which we are going to put in details on the web platform. Uh, module eight is going to be about uh, laboratory procurement and inventory. This is uh, another major area. In some cases, when people want to do trials in Africa, uh, they order the materials and material takes a long protracted time. So by the time that they are finishing the study, that's the time that materials are arriving. We don't want a situation like that one. We want to make, um, we want to train the people on how to do the ordering, what is important, what they need to be proactive in you know, making the orders for the materials required for the study. Um, we have uh, laboratory sample management. Um, sample is the business for the laboratory. And if you don't have a proper system for managing the samples, then you're not in business. And most of the time, most of the sites in Africa do not have proper information for managing the, the, the sample. We have samples that we do transfer to Oxford most of the time, and if they're not um, kept well, the integrity of the samples will be useless. And therefore, the work that has taken probably uh, three years, four years to get the sample will come to zero. And we need uh, a system for good documentation practice because every work that we do, the only evidence we have is how it's been documented. But some of the time, most of the time when we are um, um, documenting, we don't do proper documentation. We don't have good documentation practices. We, that's lacking in Africa. And those are some of the things that we would like to show them how to do it. Uh, laboratory quality control is another area as well as external quality assessment. That is the only time you can prove to uh, the sponsor, the researcher, the PI that the results that you're producing from your laboratory is reliable. And if you don't have a quality control and also external quality assessment scheme, you may not be able to prove to the sponsor or whoever is in charge of the study that the results coming from your laboratory is reliable. And um, validation is also a big topic nowadays. We have validation procedures, but they're not followed the way as, as required by this, uh, the procedures. Uh, we're going to put that on the system. Laboratory information management system is another big area, as well as corrective action, preventive action procedures. Uh, so what is our lab module milestone? Um, we anticipate that uh, by the end of August this year, we shall have finished um, uh, writing the draft for lab modules and um, also the development. And by the end of September, we shall have finished, um, we shall have finished uh, review and authorization of lab modules. And in October to December, we are going to pilot the module on the platform. And so that it should be ready for launching in January 20, 2014, sorry, not 2013, <laughs> 2014. So what's our vision? What's the vision for the global health trials? Uh, we want to make global health trials a classroom for laboratory modules. Anytime somebody wants to go to the classroom, you easily just go to their computer, go to the website, and get the information. And so you learn we, through the stages of the modules that we have put there. We want, we, I would wish to the global health trials to provide online training and certification.
for the short-term courses that we are doing at, uh, at the moment they are being done by the consultants that if you want any short-term training you get a consultant you pay them a lot of money they train you and then they leave but they don't uh, follow up what is happening but through this um, global health trials we'll be able to follow up what um, people are doing but, uh, with their training and courses we would like um, the system or the global health um, global health network of a database to, uh, to keep for us database for laboratory training so that we can be able to follow up the trainees and if they're not doing well we can also look for ways of uh, retraining them so this is the vision for global health network in that if we can have the system running we can use it for training the, 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 the team we can use it for certification and provide the certificate as you can see this for people the group that we train in Tanzania Dar es Salaam Muhumbili University and this was provided by you know the, um, one of the American universities and they bring um, they bring consultants and this is a lot of money but if you can have the platform running there will be no need of paying a lot of money to the consultants so uh, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Trudy Lam who came up with this idea that I should come here and work with Liam and the team for two weeks. Uh, I've really worked closely with Liam, uh, Tamzin, Nicola, Sam, and Francois. Uh, I also appreciate my lab, lab manager back uh, in Kilifi, Brett Law, and um, my center director, Kevin Marsh. And I acknowledge uh, Oxford Tropical Network for sponsoring my coming here and making sure that um, I'm, I'm maintained well in Oxford. I would like to acknowledge Center for Tropical Medicine at CCTV for the facilities that they have given me sitting down on a, on, on a table, on a, on, a, on a desk, and having to make sure that my, uh, my, I'm getting access to the network. Uh, I appreciate uh, the University of Oxford and uh, calling us guest hubs for providing accommodation. And also, Oxford Share, I went to the countryside and I enjoyed horse ride. So <laughs> I've enjoyed every bit of my stay here in Oxford. And I look forward to coming back once again in the future. Thank you very much.